these are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the 49ers vs. Texans game plan video. And yeah, we're, we're, we're about to go into all of this. We're going to talk about how the 49ers need to attack the Houston Texans on offense and defense and what will be the best game plan they could possibly put together to hopefully get a W, Alex, and get the 49ers into playoff positioning and with a couple of losses by other teams maybe secure not only a playoff spot, but the six seed in the NFL playoffs. Be huge, man. Uh, securing that six seed would be fantastic for this team after everything you've been through. But it starts this weekend, right? It starts with this game against this this opponent with questions at the quarterback room, Ant. Questions. You know, is Trey ready? Is he that guy? Can he be that guy that we drafted for this exact situation right here that we're looking at? Or is Jimmy Garoppolo going to be the quarterback? And while we both think the game plan is similar with both guys, there will be some differences. Um, here's here, Let's start with the similarities, right? The, the easiest thing to do is to start with the things that we think the Niners are going to do, regardless of who the quarterback is. Number one, run the football. And you're going to try and get that run game going. The Texans have shown they have struggled with guys in the box, whether it's eight guys, nine guys, whoever many guys there are with stopping the run. And they've also shown that they'll be very aggressive. So you come out, in two tight end sets with the fullback, they are going to be coming after. They're going to be flying downhill in all respects, all regards. They're going to have three or four guys that are responsible for sitting in coverage, and they're going to send the rest of everyone else in either on run blitzes or committing to stop or slow down the run game, and that leaves them susceptible in the backside in which there's some suspect play from backside DNs and, and suspect play from backside outside linebacker, excuse me, the weak side linebacker for the Houston Texans. And they get themselves caught up and caught up in the wash a lot or running themselves just too far downhill, having the tackle or tight end or whoever it is easily kick somebody out and then running underneath it. Um, This is an area where the Niners are going to be able to have and find success. The more success they find, the bigger the chunks are in the run game against these eight man, nine man fronts, uh, not fronts, but boxes from the Texans. And then you're, you're talking about a situation where you're going to open up so many avenues in the passing game that regardless of who, whoever the quarterback is, you're going to find success pretty much anywhere you want on the football field. Uh, this is a run first week. This is a week where the 49ers need to attack with a run game first um, and make the Houston Texans, you know, bring up a eighth guy into that box. They will not want to do that initially. Um, they might start off the first couple of plays like that, but they really want to be able to keep these guys back deep. They like to play their corners off. They like to play their safeties off. They like to play off coverage and then rally and make tackles underneath. The 49ers can make that a mute point um, by getting this run game going early. And like you said, attacking the weak side of the defense where they have an outside linebacker that's not very good. He's a guy the 49ers can attack. And one way they'll be able to attack them is by using motion and also using pulling linemen against them. Um, they will be looking for George Kittle. They'll be looking for Kyle Juszczyk, Lakin Tomlinson, you know, and Daniel Brunskill to be moving. Um, and they're going to look for them, you know, post snap. And once that snap happens, they're going to want to follow those guys with their eyes. So Kyle Shanahan, you know, and Mike McDaniel can use those guys in ways to not only move the pocket when it's time for play action, but to also get run plays that they want to run, um, get to the flow going one way, fake a pitch with Debo Samuel, pull the lineman back the other way or pull a, you know, a Kyle, you check the other way and then kick someone out and run underneath it. And if you're doing that back to the weak side, if you're showing power run to the strong side and then hitting with weak side plays against that linebacker group where he's going to fly upfield and take off, take the outside edge and leave an avenue and lane for you to go up underneath in that C gap. That is going to be huge possible place for the 49ers. You reinsert Elijah Mitchell into this run game, and all of a sudden now you have a dynamic ability to run the football 30 to 40 times in this football game and completely take you know charge of this Texans team early, which will open up avenues for you to be able to go not only down the field, but over the middle of the field where Jimmy Garoppolo likes to, li- to live, but also where Trey Lance will live if he's the one that is deemed to be doing it because those are going to be locations that are going to be open as these linebackers commit and these safeties continue to worry about plays going over the top, especially with Trey Lance at the quarterback position. 
thousand percent yes. And, and here's, here's where things will start to differ. Um, execution of said run game. Execution of said run game will vastly change depending on who the quarterback is. If you have a guy like Trey Lance out there, then it makes sense to go with more potentially RPO slash read option type looks, if not quarterback powers. I know people are going to hate hearing that, but it is a strength of Trey Lance, my guys. I, I cut back crew. I get it. Stovey during the live stream um, was, was yesterday was saying, or excuse me, two days ago on Thursday was saying, you know, I don't want to see quarterback power 10 times. Now, listen, I, I get it. But have you seen Trey Lance run the quarterback power? It, it's pretty, it's pretty solid. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, he runs it well. The patience is there. Uh, the only thing I don't like is him getting low and getting at lineman's feet. Ant. that's the only thing I don't like about it, but the line blocks it extremely well. They executed it at a very high clip. And when it's second and long third and third and like medium, if you're Kyle Shanahan and you're sitting there going, Hey, I'm, I'm taking two downs here. It's a play that a lot of teams, you may see it a couple of times, but how many times are they honestly going to run it? How many times are the Niners actually going to do that? Put their quarterback in a position to get hit put their quarterback in a position. Those quarterback powers are a problem, um, but I expect RPOs to also be utilized heavily and uh, run pass options as well as read option potential looks because it just keeps the Texans honest. It keeps them honest. It makes it so that, hey, you want to put eight or nine guys in the box. That's fine. You can do that. You can put eight or nine guys yeah. in the box, but you better have someone who's accounted for Trey Lance. And if we have one guy or two guys having to account for Trey Lance's space, well, that's one or two less guys that's not accounted for Elijah Mitchell, Jeff Wilson Jr., Tracer, whoever it is, Debo Samuel, no matter who the person is, they're not accounted for him. And now you're getting closer to that 11-on-11 11 11 style of running, which I mean, we haven't really got to see it yet to its full effect. Even though Trey Lance had a start this year, he didn't have Elijah Mitchell in the backfield. With Elijah Mitchell back there, Ant, I, I foresee lots of problems for the Houston Texans trying to go 11-on-11 11 11 football to slow down this run game with a defense that has already struggled to slow down the run. They can't do it. I mean, they can't. I mean, uh, this is one of those situations where the Houston Texans are not built to stop this 49ers run game, especially if it's 11-on-11 11 11 football. Um, we've seen the shift in 49ers offense to shotgun more with Jimmy Garoppolo you know, than they ran early in the year, especially you know, in his most prolific season in 2019. You've seen that shift happen during the year. That favors what Trey Lance does already. Trey Lance is going to sit in the shotgun. He's going to feel comfortable in that situation. He's going to have more vision and more distance from him and the offensive line, which is going to allow him more time to be able to read and less things that he needs to worry about as far as getting away from center and locating his reads. Um, so you're going to see him in shotgun, and all those things are going to come off of that, whether that's the read option like you talked about, you know, freezing a defender, making a defender make a choice whether to, you know, go down the line of scrimmage with, an, with a running back such as Elijah Mitchell who's got speed and enough speed to put a lot of pressure on you, but also to cut back if you don't squeeze it down. And then you've got Trey Lance who, if you do squeeze it down, can pull and get around the outside. And if he's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, we've seen that he will take that linebacker on. It's not always the best choice, but those are situations where he can protect himself in read option situations he can get out you know it's outside the the numbers he can get outside he can get down and he can protect his body those are a little bit different than those you know powers that you're talking about the one thing i will add to that alex that about the run game from trey lance that could be added in this game is actually quarterback counter you do the same sort of thing and make it look like a quarterback power and then he goes back against the grain the other way those would be big time possibility of big time plays that you can use him to um you know get this run game going and also pick up key first downs third and shorts are very dangerous with Trey Lance behind, you know, behind center, actually in the shotgun, not really behind center. Um, but you talked about the RPOs, and you're 100% you're right. The RPOs are open more than ever. As long as Trey has these reads down, which I'm going to believe he does because he's somebody that's ran RPOs, you know, his whole entire career, especially in college, is these linebackers from the Houston Texans have to commit to this run game. They have to flow, you know, with the movement. And with him and shotgun, if you get Elijah Mitchell going one way and those linebackers are freezing and they're not, you know, being disciplined and going with Mitchell, Mitchell will get a step on them. He will have a big run play. Um, so this is going to be huge opportunities. And the fact that he has a emerging Brandon Ayuk, which he didn't have against Arizona, and he, and then Debo Samuel being an all-world player, and a healthy George Kittle, which he didn't have against Arizona, you would think the weapons for Trey Lance are stacking up. We already know what Jimmy Garoppolo will do with those weapons. He'll get the ball to them in timing, in rhythm, and let them run with the football. If Trey Lance does the same thing, I see a lot of potential for him to be able to move the ball through the air. 
thousand percent yes and a thousand percent yes all of the yeses for that that is just the reality uh, look at jimmy garoppolo is back there you can see yes 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 uh if jimmy garoppolo is back there you're gonna see more of the same for the run game um expect some tosses uh, expect a lot of creativity with Debo Samuel and shotgun. Expect to see Elijah Mitchell and Debo Samuel in gun with Jimmy Garoppolo motioning one of them and then running to the strong side. And because what they won't do is run any which direction that they possibly can run. Like we saw in one film breakdown in which, you know, when you got Jimmy, you got Debo on the left and you got Elijah Mitchell on the right, they can run anywhere. And it's like, well, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing strong left here. I'm pretty sure they're running to the left, but hey, you know, it's fine. Although this is a week eight where you could see, hey, you could see that this week. You can see that good look and the Niners actually run to the weak side for the first time all season because of how bad the weak side is for the Houston Texans. So you know what? In this one case, and a broken clock could be right twice a day. We'll see on Sunday, won't we, depending on who the quarterback is. But what you will get a lot from Jimmy, it's checks, checking and getting them into the right plays, Oscar and getting them, you know, across the line of scrimmage. I don't know how much of that trade has mastered, right? That is one thing that we're not sure of. Um, in terms of being able to execute the offense and oh, executing sure. things, uh, you're sure he can or you're sure that I, you're I, not I, sure? I, I'm actually sure that he can handle that part of the of the of the game plan. The, um, the because you got in the in the canning, right? Because right, he's had 17 weeks of it. That's something that is an X's and O's type thing. That's not something you're reading as it goes. True. That's a pre-snap read. Everybody's more stationary. It's a little bit easier to read that pre-snap things aren't going to be. I think the problem for Trey Lance, it's post-snap when people start moving in different directions and things are flying at you. Pre-snap though, he can do that. Plus. We all know that Kyle Juszczyk is the one that helps Jimmy Garoppolo make these calls. Kyle Juszczyk will also be helping uh, Trey Lance make these calls as well. That is true. That is true. Um, but what we, what we do know about Jimmy, though, is that when he does can-can and he does Oscar, it's usually good things. Those are things oh, yeah. with, with Trey that you're not necessarily 100% convinced of yet because he hasn't done it enough and he hasn't had the opportunity to do it enough. So this Sunday could be that first sort of test of that. Uh, but Jimmy's going to get you in and out of the right calls in terms of the run game, pass game, et cetera. Um, and with the run stuff and the run formations, there is always the threat of Jimmy Garoppolo pulling on play actions and being able to get the ball out in space. And typically you're not that worried about Jimmy Garoppolo uh, in RPOs, Ant, in RPOs uh, missing on certain things because we've seen <laughs> – what do you mean? The thumb, is, that, is the thumb an issue, Ant? Is that fleck of be. bone? Is that fleck, it, it, of, is that fleck of bone going to cause a lot of problems? You just said pool, so I'm just like, I don't Touché. know, man. Touche. Touche. I mean, really, that, that's that's the, probably the only part of the game plan that we're not sure about, right? Um, what are Jimmy Garoppolo's limitations? And if Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback Sunday, nobody's going to know what those limitations are other than Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo because no one's seen him. No one's seen him do anything, and no one's going to see him do anything, and. Uh, you won't see if Jimmy Garoppolo was playing. You won't see anything from Jimmy Garoppolo until pregame warmups on Sunday. That is that is it. That is all you're getting from Jimmy Garoppolo this week if he is going to go. So you don't really know what those limitations are. What is he comfortable with, right? Is he comfortable taking a, a snap from under center? Is he more comfortable out of gun? Well, we see even more gun from Jimmy Garoppolo than we've ever seen before. You you just don't know. Um, and look, we did see that Jimmy Garoppolo against the Titans as the game progressed after the thumb injury, he got better and better as a passer, started completing more passes, wasn't making his errant throws, was able to get those high balls that he's been throwing over the middle of the field down a little bit so his receivers could at least catch them and get a hand on them. Um, and that led to the big play for Debo Samuel and the Niners being able to put up points there at the end of the game to tie. So is Jimmy Garoppolo going to be able to operate over the middle of the field? Yes. But to what extent and what consistency is the is the key? Um, and if Trey Lance is the quarterback, you and I both know Kyle Shanahan is going to dial up a lot of short stuff early in the football game to really get Trey some easy completions, get him in rhythm, get his confidence going before they start opening things up and letting him try and let him loose, I guess, is the right way to, to put it. Um, but Trey, it, based on what we've seen from this All-22 film, regardless of what happens, Trey is going to have to operate over the middle of the field because they are going to sell out to stop this run game. If I'm if I'm Kyle Shanahan and Trey Lance starts this game, play one, I'm taking a shot. 
I'm going to the end zone on the very first play. Ooh, I, I like I'm, 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 I'm either sending Brennan Ayuk or Travis Benjamin or somebody on a deep route. I'm running a play action look, and I'm letting this kid absolutely uncork one. Um, that would make everyone scared, you know, scared for their life because I want I want him to feel like he can let it go, and I want to take an opportunity and take a chance. Um, and give your playmaker, you know, a chance to do it. But that will help him settle in right away. I, I like that thought process with a young guy. I know that, you know, getting him a short pass makes the most sense because you're going to get him a rhythm throw. You're going to get him confidence and stuff like that. Um, but sometimes just letting loose and letting go actually settles you in even more. Um, you, but you have to know who the quarterback is and you have to know what their makeup is. Do you think the Texans would let that happen on play one if Trey Lance walks out there? This is why I say that. I say this because I've seen what the Cardinals did, right? Which was basically just show and run base cover three and not even hide it. I mean, I'm talking corners 15 yards off, just sitting yeah. in base cover three. Trey, you're not throwing deep. You're going to have to operate somewhere else other than deep down the field. Can the, can the Texans have it both ways? And can they load that box up and still protect the deep half? Or do you think one of those two things is going to have to give and that leads to the opportunity in this window early in the football game to just put the fear of God in them and make them choose? Do you want to stop the run or do you want to prevent Trey from having big plays? What do you think the Houston Texans think is going to happen? They think that Kyle Shanahan is either going to try to establish this run game or get him a rhythm throw to get him feeling comfortable. You know, getting him getting early down success with a run play um, may mean they are going to commit an extra guy to the box early in this football game and think that they are going to be, you know, thinking ahead of what Kyle Shanahan is thinking, not thinking he's going to take a chance because against Arizona, Trey Lance didn't take shots down the field, which we both know he can do because we saw him do it in training camp and in the preseason, but no one has sold an NFL season in an NFL regular season game yet. So why not go ahead and just load up and take a shot? If it's not there, tell Trey Lance to overthrow everyone. He can throw it a, you know, a quarter mile. He can throw it over those mountains if he wants to. Um, it's no problem for him. He could throw it over Great America, and, and it just wouldn't be a big deal. Um, so I think that you go out there and you take this opportunity. I, I see you got the reference. Um, and I think it would be exciting. It would be fun. And it would definitely you know put the fear of God into the Houston Texans. Yeah, that was... That's absolutely glorious. It was so great. It was so it was so phenomenal. You know, I, I and it's funny. It's funny that you brought that up and you mentioned that movie, Ant, because I think a lot of people feel like if they had just put Trey Lance in earlier, right, we we would have won the state championship. We we'd be we'd be on our way to the Super Bowl already, even though playoffs haven't even started. Uh, look, I, Trey Lance can't throw the ball a mile. I mean, he'd throw it forever. Um, you know, I flash back to those Mike Vick Powerade commercials where he was throwing it out of the stadium. Right, Ant, um, you know, if Trey Lance ever, I mean, he's going to. At some point, I imagine them having, you know, a, a Trey Lance throwing the ball out of the stadium commercial power rate. You're welcome. You can rehash and have Mike Vick being like, nice kid. Nice, just standing there watching it happen. Uh, but look, Trey Lance can throw a beautiful deep ball. He throws one of the nicest deep balls I think I've ever seen from, from any quarterback ever that I've watched at a training camp or seen in person live at a game. And I've seen a lot of quarterbacks playing football and maybe not as many as some of the other cutback crew who've been around for a while and been to more games, probably all the way back to potentially keys are and, and even early, early on in the days of candlestick. Um, but I did see some games at candlestick and I've, I've seen games here at Levi stadium. You know, I've, I've been to a lot of football games and Trey Lance throws an incredible deep ball. He really, really does. It's one of the things that makes him so special. Um, and so, yeah, I, if Kyle Shanahan dials this thing up, right. And the Texans, based on right what we've seen from Trey Lance in the regular season in terms of against the Seahawks and that half a game that he played and against the Cardinals in the full game that he started in which there were no deep shots being made. If they take that for granted, they will be sorry. They will be sorry, which is why a part of me feels, and they, maybe this is my bias from just having seen Trey in training camp and knowing what that limit is and just how great it is, but there's no way the Texans are going to do that. There's no way that they're going to sit there and be like, yeah, let's just run cover one and load the box up to start the game and well, make sure I'm first three. down. You think it'll be cover three? Hundred percent, it'll be cover three with the corners playing just, off. Uh, with the corners playing off and Debo running a middle crosser and everyone sucking down in space and then BA going over the top, it could happen, dude. Bingo! It could happen. And it's because and of Debo Samuel. It's because of Debo Samuel. You're well, right. And George Kittle, but you you come into oh, it. You come. 
you're coming into a situation too, Alex, where you're going to call two plays in the huddle. You know what these two plays, you don't even have to have the two plays. They already know what they're going to be when they go into the football game. And all Trey <laughs> has to do is read it. Kyle Juszczyk, read it as well. And Damn, oh, can or is, kill, kill. There it is. And it's either the big shot, you take the big shot down the field, or you take the run play that is there, or, you know, whatever the second call it could be two pass plays, whatever it is, the rhythm throw or the deep pass. Um, but I'd like to see Kyle Shannon open it up and go after it and go, you know, show everyone, hey, we're, we're, we're out here to win football games and we're out here to take shots. And our young guy has got a cannon for an arm that we can use. Of course, a similar situation would not be there for Jimmy Garoppolo because you're not going to try to have this guy throw it, you know, farther than the 18 to 20 yards that he traditionally, you know, tops out at because you don't know what he's going to be able to do with that thumb. He directly needs those, you know, those rhythm throws, those early throws where he can get slant passes that crossers over the middle to Debo Samuel, which would mean that I, I do believe the Houston Texans would try to murk and, and muddy up that middle of the football field and bring that safety, bring those creepers, bring the robbers, um, all those certain situations to try to take that away. And they're going to have to find other creative ways to win. Um, now, if he's able to prove that he can consistently complete those passes, even with the injured thumb, then every the, the game changes, right? Then it, it's back to normal. Jimmy's able to do the things that he can do, and the 49ers have a good enough football team to win the Houston, you know, win against the Houston Texans. But I think that you know there is a little bit of a different way to handle both quarterbacks. A thousand percent, and a thousand percent. We'll see what happens, and we'll see who ends up actually being the guy on Sunday and who the quarterback is, because depending on who that is, um, you know, maybe necessarily how the game starts and, and how many big both. play boom potentials. Could, so this is the other thing you brought this up in the live stream. I think this is, that's a perfect segue into this. Is there any world where it's both Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance? And we finally see some semblance of the thing we call the Shanna plan. And in which Kyle Shanahan rolls with both quarterbacks, both guys go out there and both guys execute the offense at a very high level because of the different things they do skill set wise. And the D coordinators having problems. You brought up a very interesting possibility in the live stream in which Kyle Shanahan calls plays for Jimmy Garoppolo, Mike McDaniels calls plays for Trey Lance so that Kyle can stay in rhythm with play calling when Jimmy is playing quarterback because he said that was one of the problems he's been having. You roll Jimmy out there, you're calling some stuff, you throw Trey in there, and then teams start doing weird things with their fronts and their defenses, and now Kyle's off because he's trying to call plays for Trey, and he's getting much different things than he was getting with Jimmy Garoppolo. And he's like, well, shoot, now I'm out of rhythm with Jimmy. Now the offense is suffering a little bit because of it, and I can't, I can't do that to this football team. Is there a world in which Kyle Shanahan is giving up half of the play calling duties, duties to Mike McDaniel to really screw with the Houston Texans? I think there's a world where anything is possible. That's one thing I know about Kyle Shanahan is he wants to win football games and he has have a lot of belief in Mike McDaniels or he wouldn't have named him as his offensive coordinator. I know that he trusts him in the run game, especially. Um, and I think that it's, you know, it's a game plan that's going to be put together by Kyle Shanahan and Mike McDaniel but it could be executed in a different way than ever before. Um, there might be scenarios where you want to play both of these guys, especially if Jimmy is limited to do certain things in this offense, that you want opportunities for Trey Lance to get out there, especially if you are worried that maybe Jimmy Garoppolo can't continually do this for the rest of the season. You just want to get Trey some of those snaps. It would be a good situation where there are times when, yes, Mike McDaniel calls the plays for Trey Lance or for Jimmy Garoppolo, depending on you know what they decided, and that Kyle Shanahan calls the other one. Because I know David Campbell was worried about them going out of rhythm, but you have two minute breaks, you have commercial breaks, you have you know timeouts, you have situations where the the clock stops, and a coordinator won't get out of rhythm because he's continuing to build off of what he just did, even though there's a time stamp difference between when you called your last play and when the next one comes. The change in what the defense is going to show you by how it plays against that personnel grouping won't change. Um, so you can kind of stay in the right the right frame of mind. When you bring Trey Lance out, you're going to see a different type of defense entirely. They want to play more guys at the line of scrimmage. They want to account for him. Um, and the things and the skill sets that he has is just different than Jimmy Garoppolo and where he executes. So the game, so it does you know change a lot. So going back and forth can be difficult. So this is an avenue and way that they, maybe they could do that. I don't know if Kyle Shannon will ultimately do it, but I do see a, you know, a world where this is a possibility. Why not, you know, give it a whirl, even if it's on just a short period, right? If it's Mike McDaniels, you're calling these two plays or, you know, you're doing this in this situation. We went over it. It, it could be a good situation for them to be able to use both quarterbacks in tandem 
in certain situations, protect Jimmy Garoppolo, get Trey Lance out there on the field, and get through these two must-win football games to get yourself to the playoffs because really when it comes down to it, that's all that matters. And when Kyle looks at his team in the mirror or in the face during halftime, during the end of the game, he wants to be able to say, you know what? I did everything I could to help you guys win these football games, and we went out and we got it done. Thousand percent. So let's see. Let's see what happens. I would love it. Uh, yeah. There is nothing I would love more than actually see the Shannon plan come into effect. And this would be a very unique and different way for it to occur, but it addresses all the problems that Kyle was discussing with in terms of rhythm and things of that nature, while also allowing both guys basically skill sets to shine, keeping teams completely on their toes, and also, you know, basically distributing the responsibility even more so throughout your coaching staff and Mike McDaniel and giving him an opportunity to, to, I guess uh, some people would refer to it as let his freak flag fly ant because people think that he's very unique and different, but basically like just it. let that, let that genius come out, right? Let, let's see what makes him so special and so unique and let this, let this thing take it to a whole other level because this would just would drastically change the way teams view the 49ers. If they did this, this week against this team, heading into playoffs, uh, teams have to be sitting there going, uh, we, so we have to prepare. It was a joke. Before we all thought it was a joke. We have to prepare for two quarterbacks. We have to prepare for both. That would be a nightmare scenario for the rest of the league heading into playoffs because not only, Ant, would you now be doing this at the end of the season, you're doing it at the end of the season, and you haven't even gotten a full taste of what both guys can do and what the system would actually look like like with both guys flip-flopping, it'd be perfect. I mean, this would, this would be the ultimate, you know, essentially sacrifice at the end of the season. Jimmy Grapple gets hurt, and no, we're going to go to both guys. We're going to have basically a dual-threat queen who can do multiple things. Um, it's like the end of a chess game when you get that pawn to the other end of the board and it becomes a queen also, and you're like, uh, well, this guy's rolling with two now. He's got he's got two guys that can basically cover the field and do everything you you need to in order to attack. Um, that That's what we need right now. It would be great. I hope we see it. Um, but I'm not also going to bank on it. But what I can bank on, Ant, is this defense playing at a high level, which it has oh, yeah. been doing consistently. And you got to tip your hat to D'Amico Ryans. Um, what are you thinking this defense is going to need to do to slow down this Texans run game and to make things difficult for Davis Mills? First thing is you're going to have to go in there and you're going to have to confuse Davis Mills' reads. Uh, confuses pre-snap reads. We talked about, you know, I talked about this with Trey Lance, where I think he'll be able to decipher what he's going to look at because Kyle Shanahan helps – you know, reveal a lot of the things with the pre-snap motion. The 49ers do more pre-snap motion than any other team in the league, and that is to help reveal what the defense's intentions are and where they're going to be, what coverages they're running. And this is something that the Texans don't do a whole lot of. They do some of it, and some of it will help reveal. But D'Amico Ryans can confuse them. He can show blitzes. He can make them feel uncomfortable. Um, he can bring different guys, you know, up. He can bring them back. But the whole key for the 49ers is going to be able to stop this you know, Texans run game using a front seven only. Um, not having to bring one of those, you know, eighth guys in the box. That means Dequiski Tar and um Jimmy Ward don't have to come up into the box. If you can keep those guys, you know, being able to play too deep in a too deep look, um, you know, with with Norman and um Ombre Thomas getting some protection, then there's going to be opportunities for the 49ers to play very well in the pass game and then uh, obviously allow this front four to get after the quarterback. Um, but it all starts with stopping the run game with seven. If you can get that done, then you have an opportunity to not only stop this Houston Texans team, but absolutely shut them down. 100%, and that would be huge. Um, slowing down that run game, being able to do it by only committing seven, makes things tough for Davis Mills. Uh, because if you're consistently only showing seven in the box, then do you really have a favorable run box? Um, do you really have a situation here where you feel you can run the ball effectively and efficiently? And he's going to be coming to the line, trying to diagnose and dissect that, seeing seven and being like, yeah, I can, I, we can go with this. We should be good with this. But he's going to find himself consistently in second and longs, third and longs, and the pressure is going to continue to mount. He's going to feel like every throw is a big throw. It's a crucial throw. And that means maybe a guy who starts pressing, a young quarterback who hasn't found himself in a, a butt ton of those situations, but when he has consistently, hasn't always executed. Um, we saw against the Jacksonville Jaguars um, very early in that game, they were able to slow down that run game, put him in third and longs, and then bring some pressure. He was throwing some balls into the ground. Now, luckily for him, he got some calls, and the Jacksonville Jaguars made mistakes to bail him out and put him into essentially free first down situations. Uh, roughing the kicker call, they got him an automatic first down, as well as a couple other um, kind of silly penalties that put them in good spots. 
So if you're the Niners, it's all about avoiding mistakes as well. Not shooting yourself in the foot defensively, putting them in third and longs, and then covering and taking away certain things. Uh, the big thing is Brandon Cooks. Know where he's at in space. Understand that he likes to operate over the middle of the field and deep. Um, so when he's on the outside running a route, having that safety kind of bracketing over the top, and if they can take away that deep route over the top, as well as take anything away that's a deep middle crossing route, make him operate in front of the sticks. Um, and then just make sure that you're, you know, putting the one-on-one -on -one matches where you want to have them. Um, and when you have those one-on-one -on -one matchups and making sure that you dial up a blitz, maybe the one-on-one -on -one matchups that aren't favorable, dialing up a blitz that can get home. Because if, you, if you're going to go one-on-one -on -one in space with Josh Norman against certain, certain guys like a Brandon Cooks, that's a dangerous proposition. I would prefer they didn't do it. But if you're going to go that route, then you got to get after Davis Mills. Um, you're going to have to bring that pressure a little bit, and it's going to fall on Fred Warner. It's going to fall on, uh, you know, Demetrius Flanagan fouls. It's going to fall on Marcel Harris at times to be able to get up in space. And I imagine we're going to see a lot of K1 Williams coming off the edge in certain situations as well, because the shark has shown Ant when you let the shark loose a little bit, you let him hunt, he can come away with a big bite and a big sack. So K1 is going to have a very important role to play this week. Um, Josh Norman and Aubrey Thomas need to do the things they've been doing, although Josh Norman's got to be a little bit better in the short stuff. And uh, he's going to give up some stuff deep. I expect that he's going to hold in certain situations. But if he can be a little bit – you're going to disagree on this. Okay, what do you got? What do you got? Let me hear it. I'm, I'm disagreeing with that he needs to be better on the short stuff. He was tasked with playing the over top over the top in a cover three, and the guy was sitting down in the window. Um, that is not on Josh Norman. That's what he's supposed to do. Uh, I, if, if anyone needs to be tasked with this, is actually D'Amico Ryan for running that defense continuously and allowing that to happen because that is literally the hole in the defense. Um, you can't ask Josh Norman to play anything above what he's supposed to do because when he did, when he tried to do too much, he got criticized for trying to do too much and not doing his job. He has to do his job and expect his teammates to do their job. And unfortunately, um, they let him down in certain situations. And in other situations, the quarterback wide receiver combo was just good enough to have the rhythm throws and get it done when they needed to. I like it then. I, I like it. Um, I, I haven't watched as much of the all 22 of the Tennessee Titans game just because Rambles been stomping around the house and making life miserable. And so I just don't want to watch it. But at the end oh, of the no. day, look, the, I, I try uh, at the end of the day here, which, which you have with this defense is, you know, where your weaknesses are in the secondary, you know, you have some issues right now at the linebacking core. So number one, slowing down that run game is going to make things a little bit easier and a little bit more palatable because you're putting your defense in situations on third and longs where you believe, you have to believe that the Niners can get off the field and be more efficient on third downs and make the, the Texans less efficient. Um, and you have a young rookie quarterback and a very beaten up O-line for the Texans in which you believe your front four in most situations is going to be able to get that pressure and get it done. So not shooting yourselves in the foot, no silly penalties, things of that nature. And on early downs and take away the strengths of the Houston Texans. Don't allow them to get that run game going. Don't let Brandon Cooks operate freely one-on-one -on -one early in downs, take him away early, make them make them play to weaknesses, make them try and go to the young rookie tight end and Brevin Jordan out in space. You know, let's test Nico Collins out there on the outside one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, let's make Davis Mills have to scan the field, not be able to just third, third step of his drop, fourth step of his drop, fifth step of his, step of his drop, plant that back foot and be able to deliver the ball to read one. If D'Amico Ryan's keep those disguised coverages, at the level that we've seen, Davis Mills should struggle because I don't expect this run game for the Texans to be able to bail them out this week. I, ju I just don't see it. Yeah, I think in early downs and early situations, there's only going to be two ways that the 49ers catch themselves in a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. And that is going to be like you talked about with the blitz, you know, with them bringing somebody um, that could give them, you know, a situation where they have one of these cornerbacks in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And I think the other one would be is if they're not able to stop the run on early downs with the front seven, then they're going to have to send one of these, you know, safeties into the box. And that might, you know, Make it so one of these corners are one-on-one. -on -one. Those are not good situations, especially if the one receiver that is, you know, opened up and one-on-one -on -one is Brandon Cooks. Um, you like the fact that it could be Nico Collins. You got Ombre Thomas, who should be very familiar with him. And also the length, you know, is something that would go Ombre Thomas's way. Ombre Thomas is also the quicker of the two cornerbacks, so you'd think he's a better matchup for Cooks as well, except for the fact that Cooks is a, is a great veteran and has great a short area quickness. 
Um, he might be a problem for both cornerbacks. So they're going to have to make sure that Jimmy Ward is nearby. And yes, I say Jimmy Ward, even though I love Jaquiski Tart, let's make Tart go ahead and take, you know, help take away Nico Collins over the middle and help, you know, eliminate Nico or uh, Brevin Jordan. I think those are good situations for the 49ers. Um, but I do think that if they have early down success on first and second down and they force third and longs, they're going to play it two different ways. I think sometimes they will sit back as they did against the Tennessee Titans and make Davis Mills make those rhythm throws and then rally and make tackles you know, in front of the sticks. But the other way they're going to do it, because it's Davis Mills, because he's not as athletic, and because they don't have to fear his legs like they did Ryan Tannehill, they'll run that cover one that they've been running. They will bring these guys up and man up across the board and expect their front four to come up. They'll show double A blitz with Fred Warner and you know with uh, Marcel Harris. And they will make Davis Mills, you know, think about the rush and then think about where he needs to go with the football. And he'll have to make a quick decision. And if he makes the wrong decision, it could be a big play for the 49ers. So I think those two different scenarios, the way they can handle it. And it's all proof in the pudding because they've done it all year long, um, depending on what kind of quarterback they were playing and what types of situations they were in. Thousand percent. Ant. Um, this is you and I are pretty much on the same page in terms of what D'Amico Ryan's job needs to be and what the task is at hand. And I have complete faith that he can get it done and, and dial this up for this team. Um, I, I'm, the defense is probably the least of my concerns. It's the question marks, I guess, in terms of the quarterback room offensively and, and what you're going to be doing there. And, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo's limitations are a question. And Trey Lance's inexperience is a, is a question, I guess, I guess the best way to put it. Um, I think the only other thing is it's just special teams. And I think you and I differ on this because I think in, in the live stream you said it, you expect the special teams to come out in a big way and have a huge bounce back game. And I'm not so sure. Um, and it's only because we haven't seen the special teams team have success without Demetrius Flanagan Fowles and Marcel Harris out there. And this is a week in which they are going to be asked to step up and play big roles defensively and start um, at times start, you know, with, with all three of Fred, uh, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles and Marcel Harris out on the field in your base for three sets. And when it's not out there, You'll, I imagine you're going to have a situation where Fowles is out there with, with Warner and, and or Harris out there with, with Fred as well. So you're going to have situations where you have a mixture of those guys, and that means most likely you won't see them on special teams. And that has been a problem for the 49ers, not having those two special teams aces out there. They've struggled at times. Um, I, guess, I guess explain a little bit more the confidence that you're having in this and, and why you believe they can bounce back. Um, because some people are going to feel like me that maybe they are going to struggle and, and, you know, that's not good for the 49ers, but what makes you think that they can bounce back in a big way this week? Because I've been listening to Richie Hightower and Kyle Shanahan talk all year about, you know, the special teams and the give and take about, you know, players that start and then also who gets to play on special teams. And Richie Hightower has mentioned in previous weeks that there would come a time, you know, sometimes that players are tasked with playing it being starters. There would come a time when these players would be tasked with playing both special teams and playing even if they were starting. I um, mean, this is that situation. You're the last two games now. You're not worried about these guys staying healthy. You're worried about winning football games. So Demetrius Flanagan Foles, Marcel Harris, they'll be tasked with playing not only on starting defense, but also playing on special teams as well. You have the fact that you have Dante Johnson back now. He can play on the outside as a gunner. Um, yeah, he's not training cannon, but he he is solid out there. So you're going to have these guys there. Um, they also have key guys on the practice squad that I believe, you know, could ultimately, you know, benefit the football team. Um, but they have some, you know, some safeties as well that, you know, are going to help as well. Are you missing Hufanga? Absolutely, you're missing Hufanga. Um, that's a huge loss. You're missing Trenton Cannon. Those are those have been huge losses. Um, so, yeah, there are some weaknesses, but I think all these players are going to rally together and step up. They understand what this means. One of the key words, Alex, and you'll you'll <clears throat> you'll love this, was everyone has referred to it as playoffs. You know what you don't do in playoffs? You don't worry about who's going out there. You put the best player out there. If he's going to be the best special teamer, I don't care if he's lining up as a starting safety. Kuski Tart, jump out there and start playing special teams because we need you to win football games. And you know what? They'll do it because they want to get to the playoffs. They want to have an opportunity to win that Lombardi trophy. So it starts right now. It doesn't start in wild card weekend. It starts right now. And that's why I think the special teams bounces back because – in a shocking development, when you play better talent on a certain, you know, part of your team, that team usually, you know, that, that part usually plays better, Alex. Typically true, Ant, typically true. Um, <clears throat> it's like the old saying goes, Ant, uh, it's the last, it feels like, you know, the Niners are playing like it's the last game of the season, which means you just, you can't hold anything back. You really can't hold anything back, Ant. You have to go full board. You have to let it all, I know, all fly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I didn't think of it that way. 
But in that regard, I understand why you're so confident. I understand why you believe the special teams unit can bounce back. And you know what? If we see those guys rolling out there, then I feel the same way you feel. That this special teams unit isn't just going to get it done. It's going to get it done in a big way. And hopefully, Mitch Wisnowski is able to be out there because you can take some pressure off this special teams unit on kick coverage by just kicking that thing out of the end zone and kicking it deep into the end zone, making them take a knee. Uh, Because the Texans have shown that they can return kicks for touchdowns. I mean, they, they, they can do it. They did it two weeks ago. Um, they have had some special teams moments in, in this year and, and some opportunities to make big plays and they have. So look, th- this by no means is either one of us sitting here and saying, Hey, this is a cake walk, walk in the park week. The Texans just have holes everywhere. They're not going to be able to get this done. That's not what we're saying. What we are saying though, is that their holes are ripe for the picking of the 49ers. The areas where they struggle are areas where the 49ers should be able to have a lot of success as long as they go out there and execute, then the Niners have a chance to run away with this thing. Um, you know, we each gave our game predictions in the preview show. I gave mine and said, you know, the Niners needed to prove to me that they could be a team that scored, that can score 30. Um, Jimmy being injured makes me think they're not going to be able to. Trey hasn't done it yet. So when, I, I want to be wrong this week. I want the Niners to go put up a lot of points. The defense can help that way in a big way and by getting turnovers and special teams can help by not making crucial mistakes and giving the ball to the Houston Texans in extremely favorable field position. Yeah, complimentary football now. It's it's playoff time. I mean, that's that's how everyone's approaching it. So it's about field position. It's about creating turnovers and not turning over the football. It's about not making key mistakes, whether that is, you know, false starts or, you know, being a little grabby when you don't need to be. It's and all those things are going to go into it, but also the mindset of the the refs themselves will change, you know, as we get farther into the season where they're not going to want to be the determining factor. So these defensive players are going to get away with a little bit more. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of it that goes into it now, but now it's, it's, it's all about, you know, winning football games and playing complimentary football field position is going to be huge. But I believe that if the 49ers can get out there and, and run the ball and then just play very good defense, like they have for the, you know, the last several weeks, and then do an adequate job on special teams, which I think they will. I think they'll hold the line. I don't think it's going to be, you know, the greatest thing. Everyone's going to be talking about the special teams, the best, you know, unit on the field or anything. But I think they're going to hold the line and they're going to get it done. And this team's going to do enough to beat the Houston Texans. I like it, Ant. I agree with you there. They're going to do enough. They're going to put the onus on this Saints team to go out and get a win and try and keep control of their own playoff destiny, Ant. Uh, look, cutback crew, we hope you enjoyed this look at the 49ers' potential game plan, and what the offense could look like as well with questions at the quarterback position. And if you did, leave a like down below right now. And if you didn't, that's okay. Comment down below and let us know why. Uh, are we dead wrong? Why would we even talk about Jimmy? It's all Trey all day. You should know this man. Or was it something else entirely? We want to have this conversation with you. We want to talk about this potential game plan. We want insight. We want to know how you're feeling heading into this game Sunday. So leave a comment, like the video, subscribe if you have not already, and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss the reaction show post game in which hopefully, Ant, we're celebrating a big 49ers dub. Yeah, and I hope everyone had a, a wonderful new year. I hope you're enjoying you know the first day of, of 2022. We made it. Um, we've made it through a lot of things over the last couple of years. The one thing we're not going to have to wait a, a long time for is for a 49ers victory. Um, and I'm going to speak with some optimism right now because the 49ers are absolutely undefeated in 2022. And they look to keep that undefeated streak alive with a nice victory of the Houston Texans tomorrow. If the score could be 27 to 17, that'd be wonderful because that's what I predicted. Um, so that, that would be a great way to start 2022. But the 49ers 49ers will get the win. They're going to go ahead and clinch a playoff spot because I believe the the Panthers are going to win a football game. Let's go, Cam Newton. Get it done. Uh, help the 49ers secure a playoff spot. And along the way, if you know, if the Eagles could just lose to the football team and we could secure the sixth seed, that'd be wonderful as well. It would be absolutely glorious, and I hope to see to see all of it. And and you know what, I agree with you. The Niners, they're going to win. They're they're winners. They are going to win. They're just they're going they're going to do it. And we all believe in cutback crew. We hope you believe it. Football now. (laughs) What's it about you? What's it about? (laughs) It's always about the 49ers here on the 49ers cutback. You can guarantee (laughs) that, and you can take that to the bank. You just have to believe in this team. We believe hard, and we'll see you all Sunday, Ant, for the reaction show. Whether that's a Bo Dallas's sideways thumb or Jimmy Garoppolo's thumb. We'll leave that to you. And until the next one, cut back crew, stay safe.
remember the right way, is always the 49ers way.